located on the outskirts of a large university campus, hides this former chemistry building. Many students have learned to be a chemist in this building ever since it opened, back in 1945. Nowadays the students are long gone, as the university has left this historic structure behind. We started our exploration in the basement of the building. As you might have noticed already, pretty much all of the lights were on. Which meant that we have to be somewhat careful due to possible alarm systems. We also had a sneaking suspicion that we weren't alone in the building. The complex itself housed three lecture rooms and a total of 13 labs. Our goal for this exploration was to see all of the three lecture rooms and hopefully find a couple of relatively intact labs. So let's start our journey. The first thing we came across was this former lab. This room contained this beautiful natural lighting. Unfortunately the lab was already completely stripped. Let's move on further, deeper into the building. The building itself contains a lot of separate wings, making it kind of like a maze to navigate through. After a lot of long corridors, we finally came across our first lecture room. This is one of the smaller lecture rooms of the complex. Despite this, the size didn't make it any less interesting though. The history of the complex started all the way back in 1936, when the first designs were made. After this the construction started on the large new complex. The design chosen was 1930s modernism. During the Second World War the construction was stopped due to a shortcoming of materials. The building was eventually opened in 1946. In the center of the compound the largest and most grand lecture hall could be found. We were quite keen to find this one, as it was one of the most impressive parts inside the building. Unfortunately most doors were locked. The central hall is located right above the main entrance, which also made things a lot harder to navigate. Here you can see that a bike was parked inside the building, which could mean that someone was inside right now. We decided to not risk it yet. We still had quite a lot to see here. This intact lab for example. Right here countless of classes were given throughout the years. Right now we are walking to the back of the building. In the back a lot of labs were located according to the floor map of the building. So let's check it. But we first stumbled on yet another lecture hall. This here is the third lecture hall of the bunch. This one is also just a bit larger than the one we've seen before. There were also quite a bit of papers scattered all around the professor's desk. They were mostly just old blueprints of the lecture hall. After the war the campus expanded heavily due to an increase in student enrollment. Which caused that the just finished chemical building was already too small. So a new level was added right on top of the existing building. Throughout the years the building expanded slowly with the addition of new wings. Around a decade ago, the activity of the already aging structure was decreasing and slowly being moved to a newer site, a bit further on the campus. The last part we wanted to see was our main goal. And this was the main grand lecture hall. Now 
But we had to be careful, because this was exactly at the main entrance of the building. Alright, let's sneak to the entrance of the lecture hall. We are in the hall. Right here is the oldest and most grand hall of the complex. Countless of lessons were once given here in this large room. Nowadays silence has replaced the once busy hall. With this we will also finish our exploration. The renovation of the chemical building is nowadays in full swing. A lot of the newer added wings will be removed and replaced with student housing and normal housing. The main lecture hall and the facade will be preserved. Thank you. 